Hello physics students. In this video, we're going to be doing an experiment analyzing a series circuit. At this point, you should have already printed out the lab sheets. Again, like in the parallel circuits lab, you've got to print out all the sheets because there's calculations and analysis and questions on all four pages. Now, we already did the parallel lab, and so this one is very similar. It's just that we're arranging the, the resistors now in series. So fortunately, it should go smoother, and I don't need to explain things like how the uh, protoboards work or the meters work. So let me reconfigure, and let's begin our experiment. As in the parallel circuits lab, we have to begin by first measuring the resistances of our three resistors. So I'm going to configure this meter to measure ohms. I'm thereby making it an ohm meter by turning this to 2,000 ohms. Let's see. Okay, that's reasonably visible. Bit of a glare, but best I can do. So I turn this to 2,000 ohms. I plug one wire into temp ohm volts and the other one into com. And then I simply clip the alligator leads on either side of the three resistors. So here's the green one, uh, 472 ohms. So I'll write that down on my data sheet. So right here, again, you're getting your own value from the Google stream. There's a, sheet, uh, uh, a Google sheet or a, actually an Excel sheet that will give you your own data for that resistor. Moving on, I'll measure the resistance of the yellow resistor. And that one is about 561 ohms. So I write that down right here. You're going to write your own resistance value. Again, I have the unit of ohm there for you already. And the last one, the red resistor. And I have approximately 680, well, this one like, likes to flush, 683 maybe. So, all right, 684. Of course, it changes after I write it down. So I'll just cover it up on the meter like that. 684, good enough. Okay, so now what I need to do is uh, it says to, um, I did step one there, and then connect my resistors in series by plugging them into this board. So remember, in parallel, the last experiment, I put them all side by side, and that made a parallel circuit. But now I have to make a chain to make a series. So I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to begin my chain even with the red wire right there. Again, it doesn't matter if I plug the green over here to here or right next to the red wire. All of these holes underneath are connected together. And so now the electricity, you could think of it as getting to this point. And that's where the next resistor has to go to pick up the electricity where the green wire left off. So I could put the yellow over here or I could have put it there, or there, or there. Either way, it's connected in series with that green wire. Now we need the red resistor, the third resistor, to pick up the electricity in any one of these five holes. So why don't I continue the theme of creating, leaving those gaps by plugging in way over here. There, that works because the electricity will go under the board and reach the red one here and then come here and charge these holes up. Now I need to complete the loop to my power supply by connecting this yellow to any one of these holes. Right there is fine. The electricity goes in through the green one, then the yellow one, then the red one, and back, and I have a series circuit, a chain of electricity uh, by the breadboard. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do and now that I have it uh, connected in series, I'm going to calculate REQ using the formula over here. So we learned a formula for calculating the equivalent resistance of three, of three resistors in series. Again, you need the calculation nice, like we always show them in physics, with all the right things in the, form, in the calculation too. So we have an REQ value. And then we're going to measure and compare with what the meter says. So I'll go ahead and switch to, this, to the probe wires. Again, I could have used the alligator wires. This would have worked just fine. Okay. So I connected 
temp ohm volts, so I want ohms, so, so I'm going to connect there. I'm still in the ohm setting, so then I just take these and connect them like this, and it shows me my REQ, looking like it's steady at 1,700 ohms, 1,700 ohms. So I'll fill that in right here. Again, that's my value. You're going to get your own from the Google Sheet. So, uh, and then the last thing you're going to do is calculate the percent error here. When you're all done, percent error, and you have a value there. So go ahead and make those calculations now. Okay, so moving on, it's going to tell us how to set up the voltmeter and how to connect the circuit and all that stuff. But I'm going to do that for you, obviously. So first thing I need to do is change this to read voltage. Turns out that this temp ohm volt, it's still in the right place, so I could leave that. But I want to turn it not here because I'm going to go to 12 volts, so this is going to be too much for this scale. So I go to 200. This can measure anything up to 200 volts. So 12 volts is the scale that I want there. So now it can measure the voltage. And then it also says uh, to set up the circuit. So without the voltmeter, the key is the ammeter. Remember, I've said this many, many times at this point, but the ammeter has to be in the circuit as a chain in a loop. So what I will do is I will have the electricity come out of the power supply and you know what, this time instead I went into the ammeter first. For, this time I'll go to the uh, proto board first. Perfectly fine. So the electricity goes through all the resistors. Now it's going to go here and I can't go back to the power supply yet. And by the way, this won't work because voltage is always two wires. So I need to complete a loop. But I won't go like that, which would make the circuit work. But the ammeter wouldn't measure anything. So now what I'm going to do is bring this into this plug where because that's where I'm going to be measuring milliamps, so that goes there. And then finally the loop is completed by COM to the power supply. So notice I have essentially what's like a circle again, or, or a loop. So the electricity goes around, well maybe if I go like this it'll be clearer, and you could see how it goes power supply around and through this. This is like our toll booth that's going to register the electrons passing through. All right, so uh, that's that, but now I need to get the power supply up to the proper voltage. So I'll do this again. I will connect here to these posts. Nice little ingenious method that they designed there. And I'll put this here. Hopefully that's in view. Check the glare. Okay, looks pretty good. So I'm going to now turn this up to approximately 12 volts. Let's just see if we're getting current here. Okay, good. So the ammeter is working. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll go 12 and a half. Why not? Get a little bit of extra current. So 12 and a half volts, that's what I'm going to write down for the voltage of my entire circuit V total. And if you see, there's a space for that down here. So I'm going to write 12.5 volts. And once again, you're going to get your own voltage. So go ahead and get that now. All right, so now we're ready to move on to the next page. So step six, very similar to the last lab. We're going to calculate the total current in the circuit using Ohm's law and use the calculated REQ. In other words, Use this value, not that value. So use this value in your calculation. Calculate what I is. So again, there. Okay, get an answer. And then the measurement, let's see. Is that visible? Yeah, that looks nice and clear. So there's the measured current in milliamps. You see it oscillating. It's looking like it's lingering on 7.5 a little bit more. So 7.5 milliamps, which again, you have to convert to regular amps to compare it to here. And then you're going to calculate percent error. You're going to get an answer here for percent error. So go ahead and retrieve this from your data table. Make this calculation based on these R's over here. Go ahead and do that now. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is step seven. It says calculate the potential drop across each resistor using Ohm's law. Remember, potential drop is just the voltage of each resistor. Then calculate the total potential drop across all three resistors using Kirchhoff's loop rule. So first, the delta V of each of the resistors. So uh, what I need to do is make a calculation. You could put delta V or V, doesn't matter. Either is acceptable. So again, you got to have your calculations all nice in there and uh, shown so you don't lose any credit on any of the technical things that we always lo people lose credit on in the lab. So go ahead and make that calculation now. Okay, so let's move on. It says determine the potential drop in the entire circuit. So we have all of these values, right? How do you take these numbers and find the total voltage drop? So you do the calculation here as you're always supposed to with all the parts that you need to not lose any points on a lab. And you have V total here calculated out. And then you do a percent error. Now, percent error with what? Well, remember, you've got a volta, v, volt, v total here that you calculated, but all the way on the first sheet, you have the percent error that's, I mean, the, the, the voltage that was measured from the power supply. So that's what you can do a percent error on. So go ahead, calculate this, and now calculate percent error with the value you retrieve from the Google Sheet right here. Okay, next, step eight. Measure the voltage drop across each resistor. Simply take the meter set to volts uh, and firmly press the probe ends on each resistor and record the values in the following boxes. So I'm going to take the, uh, the meter probes off of the power supply and, and now I'm going to measure the voltage of each of the resistors. So let me move this so not too confusing. So how do I get the voltage of resistor 1? All I need to do is take these two probe wires and put them on either side of resistor 1 and let's see does that show up yes it does 3.3 volts is the value that I get that's across resistor remember voltage is always two points so you need to go not just like that but to both sides of the resistor and and there I get 3.3 volts so I write that down for voltage 1 right there and I'm going to do that for these two the second resistor right here, oops, 4.0 volts, okay. So you're going to get your own values here. And the last value for me of the third resistor, the voltage is 4.8 volts. So I write that down in my sheet you collect your data from the Google Sheet. Okay, so go ahead and get those values now. And then, uh, so from these potentials, determine the total potential drop across the circuit. So from these values, what's V total? Of course, you're calculating that in the nice way that we always calculate anything in a lab, showing all the steps and all the things properly plugged in. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, let's move on. One more, step nine. Predict, which means calculate what would happen to the total current in the circuit if you removed R2 from the circuit without changing the protoboard locations of R1 or R3. After you predict, remove R2 and leave uh, R1 and R3 undisturbed. Record the current using the ammeter. So here's the current. Let me just change this because this one went off, so this one's probably bound to go off soon. So this is no longer necessary. I'm going to pull this out. Just yank it straight up. What's this going to become? Go ahead and make that prediction here. What is I equal to? Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to pull this out. Oops. Let's see. Maybe like this. There. 
Okay, so there is my measured value. What happens when I pull a resistor out of a series circuit? I could write I equals zero amps. And you could go ahead and do that too because that's what it should be no matter what your resistance or voltage values were. So go ahead and write that in your sheet. Okay, step 10 is clean up. So uh, no uh, need for you to do anything. Of course, I'm going to take care of that. Step 11 and 12, read and answer, and yes, just like in the parallel lab, it could really be as simple as writing a formula down, and that's it, and you get full credit, so it might be, uh, you might be thinking, wow, that was easy. Well, it, it, it could be, so, or you could write out sentences. And step 13 is something that requires a little bit more. It says, if a component fails in a parallel circuit, the others, other, uh, oops, that's a typo, other components continue to consume electrical energy. If a component in series fails, every component stops consuming energy. Explain the origin of the different behavior, but remember to discuss both series and, par both series and parallel. Don't say, well, the reason why is because in parallel this, and then leave the question uh, that way. You gotta talk about both. Explain the difference. In series, this happens. In parallel, this happens. That's why they're different. Drawing a diagram of each circuit uh, to explain might help, not necessary, but you might choose to draw diagrams of a series and parallel circuit. So that's the lab. Go ahead and complete that now. Now, when you're done, of course, as always, take pictures of all four sheets and submit them, upload them into the Google Classroom stream. So that was the series circuit experiment. I hope you enjoyed the lab. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next physics video.